Hello and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we will get an update from Kentia Torres of the Social Security Administration. First, though, as always, we do check the news for you. The Quincy City Council is asking the Quincy College Board of Governors to explore the possibility of merging with the existing state community college system or becoming its own community college. The City Council passed a resolution to that effect this week, sponsored by Councilor at Large Ann Mahoney, who questions whether the city should be in the business of running a college. The concern is, is that as we are service providers for the city, for the people who live here, for the taxes that they pay, Quincy College is currently um, the population of Quincy that, re that goes to Quincy College is less than 19% leaving 80% of our population coming from other areas throughout the state. And when I was looking at the state community colleges, I realized that there, there are 15 community colleges throughout the state. And on the South shore from Quincy all the way down to Plymouth, there really is a, a, a barren opportunity for community colleges. There's not a community college that's serving in that area. In Brockton, we do have, um, we have Massasoit in Brockton, but quite honestly, Quincy College, uh, the only, um, the only, <laughs> Um, municipal college left in the country is serving the full of South Shore, the South Shore. Now is the appropriate time for us to ask the Board of Trustees to, uh, at Quincy College to, to go and gather the facts on maybe becoming part of the community college. It's, it's so important at this point because the college does serve a large population of people and we want to be able to continue to do that, but I'm not sure if it's correct. In fact, I know it's not correct for that to be the burden of the Quincy taxpayers. Now, Mahoney's resolution comes as the administration is requesting funding to begin the process of creating a new home for Quincy College. Mayor Thomas Koch wants to purchase and tear down the Monroe Building in Quincy Center and create a new 15-story building for the college and for city offices. The total cost of that project is estimated at $100 million. Senator Ed Markey says Massachusetts could realize $30 billion from President Biden's proposed $2 trillion infrastructure improvement package. Markey visited Quincy Center back on Monday with Mayor Thomas Koch, Senator John Keenan, and other local officials as he promotes the president's bill across the state. Mayor Thomas Koch said he hopes that if the measure does pass, then the city could use funds for projects including a new home for Quincy College, a new police police station and road and water and sewer system upgrades. Koch said he worries that not enough of the package is earmarked for infrastructure upgrades. Quincy has filed another lawsuit in an effort to stop Boston from rebuilding the Long Island Bridge. The latest suit alleges that the Department of Environmental Protection was wrong when it ruled that Quincy has no legal standing to stop Boston from building the bridge. The DEP said the Quincy Conservation Commission should issue Boston the necessary permits to rebuild that bridge. The lawsuit is just the latest in a years-long effort by Quincy to stop the bridge from being replaced. The former bridge was torn down in 2015 due to structural concerns. Boston says it wants to rebuild the bridge and open a substance use treatment center on Long Island. Quincy officials argue that a new bridge would generate dangerous traffic, harm the environment, and lead to future development on Long Island. That Weymouth man charged with stabbing three men outside of Rags Tavern in Quincy points in the early morning hours of April 25th will remain behind bars. A judge this week deemed 24-year-old Tyler McLean a danger and ordered him held without bail. McLean is charged with stabbing three 21-year-old men during an altercation that may have started on social media or via text messaging. One victim was taken to Boston Medical Center with serious injuries. The other two were treated at South Shore Hospital. McLean faces attempted murder charges and is due back in Quincy District Court on June 2nd. Well, the Dorothy Quincy Homestead in Quincy will reopen for the season. On Saturday, May 15th, the Colonial Dames of Massachusetts, who operate the homestead, said there will be a series of outdoor-only tours of the homestead beginning on May 15th and then taking place one Saturday a month right through September. 
Docents will take people on tours of the grounds and answer any questions. The interior of the house will remain closed due to ongoing construction and conservation initiatives. The tours will run from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and a $5 donation is suggested. The May 15th tour will mark the birthday anniversary of Dorothy Quincy Hancock the first First Lady of Massachusetts. The homestead did not hold any events last year due to the pandemic. Coming up, Kentia Torres of the Social Security Administration, next. The COVID vaccine is a critical tool to protect yourself and in the pandemic. But you might have questions about its safety. The same safety measures used for all vaccines were used for the COVID vaccine. Tens of thousands participated in vaccine trials to prove it's safe. Since then, millions of people of all races and ethnicities have gotten the vaccine and experienced only mild side effects. I got the vaccine to protect myself, my family, and my patients. When it's your turn, trust the facts, get the vax. Hi, we're the Quincy Fire Department and keeping everyone safe in Quincy is our top priority. And that's why we're teaming up with the American Red Cross to help sound the alarm about home fire safety. Did you know that in a home fire you have just two minutes to safely escape? That's important to remember because home fires claim seven lives every day across our country. You can help change that. Please join the Quincy Fire Department and the American Red Cross in ending home fire tragedies by taking two simple steps. Step one, practice your two minute escape drop. Step two, test your smoke and carbon monoxide alarms monthly. You can find more fire safety information by visiting soundalarm.org and pledge to prepare your family against home fires. Quincy residents can call 1-800-564-1234 to receive free smoke and carbon monoxide alarms that will be installed by Quincy firefighters starting this month. Thank you for joining the Quincy Fire Department and the American Red Cross in this life-saving mission to keep Quincy safe. I hear someone go, didn't it come from you guys? Strangers cough at me. Move away from me. Someone spit towards my direction. All the stereotypes that we've worked so hard to break are just gonna be reversed. And I won't let that happen. We all have to play our part. I donate my plasma. I've been making masks. We deserve respect as much as everybody else. I'm a firefighter, not a virus. I'm a mask maker, not a virus. I'm a nurse. I'm a delivery woman. Chef. A neighbor. Artist. Bus driver. I'm a doctor. Fight the virus. Fight the virus. Happy to be checking back in with Kentia Torres of the Social Security Administration for a little update now that we're in the month of May. Hey, Kentia, nice to see you again. Hi, Joe. Nice to see you, too. I'm glad to be back. Thank you for having me today again to speak about the new updates that we have at Social Security and to speak on behalf of the Social Security Administration. I'm very happy to be here. Great. We appreciate it, too. And uh, we'll make these uh, kind of periodic, you know, seasonal updates uh, just to stay in touch. But um, how is Social Security coping during uh, these challenging times? Well, we're doing everything we can to ensure that we're helping the public, uh, especially our most vulnerable population, that they have access to benefits. Um, many of our offices have uh, appointments, in-office appointments. But before you schedule an appointment, you must call us to make sure that you're able to get an appointment because we are helping dire need, um, you know, uh, populations. If you have a document that we need to process your application that cannot be mailed, make sure to call us. We're also still working on online applications, video hearings. Um, we're doing everything that we can to assist and process all our claims. Um, one important information that I wanted to mention is that we're getting a lot of mail in the offices. So what we suggest is if you need to submit proof of anything like pay stubs or a copy of a lease, um, you may want to fax that into the e-fax at the Quincy office. And the fax number is 833-926-1843. That is the fastest way to get it to us so that we're able to process it instead of just mailing it. But if mail is all you have available, uh, then we'll go ahead and process it via mail. Okay, that's really good information to know. And it's also interesting that uh, technology as old as faxing is, is still yeah, pretty right. relevant. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. So um, there are folks that are in the office then? Yes, we schedule appointments um, and we you know, make sure to take uh, precautions. We take the temperature, social distance, we clean every cubicle as soon as somebody leaves and comes. We make sure that we take all the uh, precautions for the CDC guidelines. 
Um, but yes, people are coming in and we allow enough time for one customer to conduct business and for them to leave before we actually allow someone in. Okay, so that's a comfort for folks uh, to yes. know that they're not going to be in a crowd of people. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Okay, great. What else? Um, so we have our new campaign for the vulnerable population, as I mentioned before. And so what it is, is we're trying to reach uh, the homeless, um, anyone with limited English proficiency, uh, someone who may not have internet access. Um, we're working with a third party um, contacts and organizations. Um, even you as a family member, you can assist. And so what it is, is we are um, assisting with the application process. We have videos, PowerPoints, instructions on how to assist those who need our help with uh, applying for SSI benefits and how to complete online applications. Um, it is easy. Uh, we went step by step every question just to make sure that the most vulnerable or maybe used to doing face-to-face -face interviews are now still getting the assistance that they need, uh, either with you, a third party, or with Social Security. Even if you refer the person to Social Security, you know, make sure they call 1-800-772-1213 so we can either schedule an appointment or assist them with the application process. We are still open to the public from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. nationwide, um, but online services too, we're on the internet. And so if um, you're able to create an account and they're able to create an account, you can assist with income letters, uh, a copy of a 1099 as people are still filing for their tax returns, if there's a change of address, there's so many things that could be done on socialsecurity.gov, even a social security card replacement, hmm. which is a very hot topic now as people are filing their taxes. And so there's a way to replace them online. But if you're unable to do it online, of course, call your local office and schedule an appointment because you may be able to come in with your documents and apply for those um, for that replacement card. Okay, um, that's great to know. Yes. Uh, the other new thing that we have is wage reporting. Uh, we have the mobile wage reporting app that you could download on your smartphone or your tablet. You could also report it by going to socialsecurity.gov. And the great thing about reporting it online is that it will bypass human interaction. It goes from your cell phone, your laptop to our computers to make sure that we avoid any future overpayments. Hmm. Um, so that's easy. What we always say is at the end of the month, make sure you add all the gross wages and report the total of the gross wages to the app or online and so that we can have the most accurate information. But let's say you do have an overpayment. You're able to download the waiver form on socialsecurity.gov or complete it online and submit it to us through that e-fax number that I provided, 833-926-1843. And then we will be able to uh, call you and conduct an interview and find ways to either resolve or come up with a payment plan for that overpayment. Okay, so really good information. And if folks don't have access uh, to the internet, I know here in Quincy, at least, at the uh, Thomas mm -hmm. Green Public Library, uh, you can arrange uh, to, to use okay. their uh, free internet access um, as well. So that's uh, something that Quincy residents can, uh, can take advantage of. Oh, yes, absolutely. And I, and I believe that they may even allow computer time mm -hmm. for, for internet applications. Great information. That's very good to know. The other thing I wanted to mention was the hearing process. Because the hearings may take sometimes a year or longer, um, the hearing office has options. You could either uh, request to have a telephone hearing mm -hmm. or you could do uh, a video just like we're doing today. Um, we would send you a link. Well, the hearing office will send you a link, so you don't have to download anything. Just access your email, and then the day of the hearing, your attorney or yourself will join and have the hearing. If you choose not to do that, then you would have to wait for it in person, but we don't have any uh, date of when we're going to open. So if you cannot wait any longer, we would suggest that you select one of the options that work for you, either phone or video. Okay. To, to get a expedited yeah yeah can you have you heard of um are there any problems with social security uh scams right now that, that folks should be aware of oh yes great question um it, there are still people calling and scamming if anyone comes to your office uh, alleging that you have an appointment and that they are a social security agent do not open the door make sure you contact um, social security and the office of inspector general to report the scam uh, I've, I've heard of people doing that. Also, telephone calls do not give anyone your social security number. Most likely, if someone for social security calls you, we will have your social security number. We may just ask you identifying information like, 
what is your full name and date of birth? Um, and very uh, identifying information that you would know, but not really your social security number. And we're not going to lock your information or delete it. Um, there's no such way for us to do that. Um, if anyone's requesting any money, we don't not charge with for social security cards. And one of the great reasons why we always say, hey, create your social security account is because you will be sure that your information is private because you put a password and uh, it would avoid you going to a third party or a um, fake uh, social security that gov and being charged for something that's free and you may be compromising your information. So, but if any of these things happen, make sure that you contact social security. You could also contact the credit bureau to make sure that you block your credit and the office of inspector general. Great advice. I've received some of those uh, robocalls myself uh, okay. claiming to be from Social Security. So just hang up. You just ignore us. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and even if you hang up, some people call us just to make sure, hey, did anyone call me? Because we've had people that we are trying to contact and they're like, how do I know your Social Security? So we always say we could call us back or we're trying to reach the person and they just not respond thinking that it's a scam. So just call us back and just make sure that nobody's really looking for you from the Social Security office. The other thing I wanted to remind everyone about is to not carry their social security card with them. Mm. Just unless you have a reason to have, um, to have it on you, maybe you're, you're filing your taxes or you, you're applying for a job. But other than that, it should be stored away with your private information at home. Also make sure that you're careful with your Medicare card um, and that you do not provide that Medicare number to anyone unless you're going to the clinic or hospital and they must have it, just to make sure that we are securing the information and keeping it safe. Yep, again, great advice, certainly. Has there been any um, changes since the new administration, the Biden administration took over that folks should be aware of? I, I get a lot of questions uh, for those who are receiving SSI benefits mm -hmm. and also uh, re who receive unemployment benefits and uh, um, stimulus or um, economic impact payments. And so the question that I always get is, am I going to be overpaid for that? And yeah. what we say is, you're not going to be paid because this is, you know, uh, to assist. It's an assistance, right? Yeah. So we're not going to charge you for that. Now, if you start receiving unemployment and it has nothing to do with the um, economic payment or the um, corona, uh, COVID-19 stimulus, then you may potentially be overpaid if you do not report it to us. Okay. So I want to make sure because if you get overpaid for any um, COVID uh, or stimulus checks, you want to be aware to, to, so that you can contact Social Security and they can take a look and see if they can resolve that overpayment. Right. Um, other than that, it's been mostly updating technology, making sure that we have appointments available for anyone who needs them, that we're doing the third party outreach mm -hmm. so that we're training agencies and organizations and that we are able to uh, ensure that everyone's uh, creating their Social Security accounts I myself go uh, into many, uh, you know, uh, public uh, speeches to make sure that we are educating the public on retirement benefits, social security benefits, how to apply for SSI. So we're doing everything possible to make sure that uh, we're able to give you the information and that you're able to receive the benefits that you need. Yeah, it's a wonderful tool to have that account. It really is, uh, provides a myriad of good information, your, your wage history, um, you know, your retirement benefit, what it would, what it would be. Um, it's yes. just, it's, it's just kind of fun actually to, to play around. <laughs> on it. And you can update, I guess, your address, account information anywhere in the United States. So if you have to travel and oh, I forgot to let them know that I'm going over there for three months, you're able to update your information. But a good thing you mentioned the earning statements, especially if you're close to retirement or you're missing a, a, a few credits or quarters of coverage, that's a great way to access your information without having to wait on the phone call with us. Um, but one of the hardest things is the income letter, uh, especially if you have uh, low income housing or you have to recertify, or even if you need a letter indicating that you do not receive benefits, mm -hmm. that's a great way to uh, um, obtain that information. If you have a printer, you're able to print it. But if you don't, there is a button that you could press to request that one is mailed to you. Good to know. So. Okay. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the unemployment um, uh, advice is, is good, especially here in Massachusetts. There was lots of fraud uh, with, with unemployment. Yes. So you don't want to be charged for something you didn't benefit from. Correct. Correct. Um, one other question that I get to is IRS um, stimulus payments. And mm -hmm. we have a lot of calls, people wondering where their 
benefit um, or their check is. And so because we're Social Security and not IRS, we always suggest that you contact the IRS, mm -hmm. um, visit um, irs.gov, mm -hmm. and there should be their contact information. I believe the best way to do it is online just because their phones are, you know, saturated, super busy. But contact the IRS if you have any stimulus check questions. Okay, great. Yes. Good information today, Kenzie. Anything else Thank you think you. we should add? Well, we're here and just make sure to e-fax, contact your local social security office. And if you have any other questions, make sure to reach out to us at 877, excuse me, 1-800-772-1213, 1-800-772-1213. And all of us are here available and ready to help you if you have any questions. Okay. Today. Appreciate the update. Much. Good to talk to you. Same here. Take care, guys. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Special thanks to Kentia Torres for joining us today. Thank you to our crew. Thank you for watching. Monday on the program, we will welcome Brenna Rogers from Bay State Community Services. Reminder for you to visit our website, qatv.org. You'll find all of our latest programs, news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and lots more. For all of us here at Quincy Access Television, I'm Joe Catalano. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms this weekend, and please stay safe.